Hey guys, welcome back. In the ninth lesson of the official Bolt series, we're going to set up our enemy states. Our enemy should be able to patrol on a platform, you know, walk left and right, seemingly randomly. And also, if the enemy gets close to the player, or the player gets close to the enemy, the enemy should chase the player until the player gets too far away, and then go back to idle. And the enemy should also be able to damage the player if the player collides with the enemy. So we're going to set that up in this lesson and the next lesson. We're going to split it up into two parts because this is quite a task. So to do all of this, we're going to be using everything we have learned up to this point. So be sure you're comfortable with all the lessons before this one because we're going to take it a bit faster because we have a lot to cover. So in our level three here, if we load this scene up, we have an enemy object, and the enemy object we're going to add the state machine to, so we can actually create some state graphs. But let's think about what we need. We need the enemy to have an alive state and then a dead state. And in the alive state, the, the enemy should be able to chase the player, should be able to randomly patrol, you know, walk back and forth, and should also be able to damage the player. If the enemy is not alive, so he's not in the alive state, he's dead, then we should, you know, kill him, knock him off the platform, make him fall to his death, that kind of thing. So we're going to be doing that in this lesson. So for this, let's go to our enemy object. And on him, we're going to add a state machine component. And again, we're going to create a new macro. And let's call it enemy. Now, I'm going to delete the start state there because I want to add a super state. So a while back, we created a super unit that allowed us to embed these graphs within other graphs. And what a super state is, is it actually other state graphs within a state graph. So this state within a state graph, in fact, has more states, right? Pretty cool. So we're going to be using that for our live state, because while you're alive, you can patrol, chase, and you can deal damage. So those are three other states within a state. So we'll make sure we can have that ability with this and I also want to have the dead state so we're going to create another flow state for this one and open it up and I'm going to call it dead back in enemy let's open up start here and I'm going to call it alive so we have alive and then dead and I want to be able to transition from alive to dead so make transition drag it down to dead and this will happen once the player kills the enemy but for now we just know that we need to be able to transition from alive to dead but not from dead back to alive because that would be like a resurrection and we don't have that ability. So within alive, I'm going to get rid of the start again. In here, we need a patrol state, a damage state, and a chase state. So let's set that up. I'm going to add a, another super state. So we have a super state within a super state within a state graph. We just have a bunch of embedded state graphs now, which is pretty cool. And this is going to be the patrol state called patrol. And now I want the damage state. So I'm going to create another flow state over here and open it up to rename it. I'm going to call it damage. So whenever the enemy is in the damage state, he can actually deal damage to the player. But the thing is, I want the enemy to always be able to damage the player unless he's in fact dead, right? So in the alive state, I think damage should always be happening. There's no transition to or from it. So what I'm going to do is I want to right click on it and say toggle start. And that's going to make it green. But what this means now since I have two starting states, is they're both going to run in parallel. So patrol's running and damage is running. Now patrol can transition from patrol to chase, while damage is always just going to be running. And then I want to have, like I said, another flow state here called chase. So let's name this chase. And I want to be able to transition from patrol to chase once the player gets close, and then from chase back to patrol once the player gets out of range. So again, make transition and then come back. So for damage, if you recall, we set up an event that will actually damage the player and throw him into invincible mode for a second in the last lesson. So we're going to use that for damage, get rid of the default here. So whenever the player collides with the enemy, keep in mind this state is on the enemy, we want to fire off the event and damage the player. So to do that, we'll use our handy dandy on collision with macro that will allow us to embed a simple super unit and we'll compare it like we always have to the player tag now if we collide with the player let's damage the player right so i'm going to fire off an event add unit custom event and i want to trigger the custom event now the event that we're going to trigger we called damage and this event 
is set up on our player object. So if we in fact hit our player, the target flow should go into this event and the object, in this case the player, will go into the object for the event. Now the event has to know how much damage do I deal to the player. So we pass in one argument and that's going to be a simple integer of one. So one hit is one damage. So if we look in player health under vulnerable, we take the one event in with one argument and we do the math, see how much damage we dealt and all that good stuff. And that's all we need for that. So I'm gonna take my enemy now and I'm going to apply our changes since we added all this to our prefab. And now I want to run this and see what happens. So let's go hit our enemy. Boom. How cool is that? So I can jump over him real quick. I hit him, it threw me into my invincible state so I could actually walk through him. And I also played the hurt animation from our player's animator component. And that allowed me to look like I took some damage and I did, which was cool, but only get hit once in that second, right? So if I walk through him again, I can walk right through him because I go into invincible mode. And the animation really adds to the oomph of our hit. And if I get hit one more time, I die and have to restart the level. That's exactly what we want. Really cool. Boop. So now I want to add the ability for my enemy to walk left and right or just kind of sit there and idle. And to do this, we'll create another macro that will act kind of like our collision macro does where we can actually pass in a value and it will do something with that value for us that we set up with a flow graph. So on our enemy, I want to add an object variable that will be our speed variable. Now this is gonna be just like our player speed variable, but I want him to be a bit slower. So if we look at our player, he can run at a speed of five. Our enemy needs to be a bit slower than him so the game's not impossible. So I'm gonna make him run at three. Now let's create a macro in our macro folder. So create, bolt, I wanna create a flow macro, and I'm gonna call this enemy movement. Now this is gonna be a lot like our player movement, but with a few different changes. So this is gonna take a parameter for the direction the enemy should move in. So if we set this up as a super unit, we use it in, let's say, our enemy, and I drag this out here, I wanna be able to pass in a direction for the enemy to move in. So in enemy movement, I wanna add an input under nesting. And I wanna have a value input that is the direction we're moving in. So it'd be a simple float. And I wanna call it direction. And now if we're moving to the left, we'll pass in negative one. If we're moving to the right, we'll pass in positive one. And if we're not moving, we'll pass in a zero. And it has default value, so we can actually assign it directly on the unit. And it has a default value of zero. And what I wanna do with the value that we pass in is I want to normalize it. If it is in the negatives, it'll be a negative one. If it is in the positives, it'll be a positive one. And if it is not, it'll be zero. If it's, if it's zero, it'll be zero. So I'm gonna take this out and I wanna normalize it just like that. And what I wanna do is multiply this by our enemy speed variable. So I'll say get object variable, it's called speed. Then I'll multiply that by our normalized direction. So I'll multiply, I'm gonna pass in our direction times our speed. And we're gonna pass this in to a graph variable, much like we did for our player movement. So I'll say set graph variable, and I'll call it movement, because we'll be using this in this graph elsewhere, and pass in our now movement speed. And we're gonna do this every single frame. So update every single frame, set our movement, based on the input that we get from the unit. So add a section to this, a little group here, and call it calculate movement. And now what I wanna do, much like we did for the player, is flip the object to face the direction it's moving in. And now luckily for us, we have a very easy way to do that with the normalized value here, because as you know, to be a negative one if we're moving to the left, and a positive one if we're moving to the right. But if it's zero, don't worry about flipping it, keep the last scale that was set. So what I'm gonna do is add a unit to check to see if it is equal, and I wanna see, is this value equal to zero? And what I wanna do for this is come back out here, I'm gonna select this unit, and I'm gonna say this unit is numeric. And that lets it know that I'm comparing the values that are in numeric form, so a float or an int, and that way I can actually just type in zero right on the B there. And now if it is not zero, we want to flip the player around. If it is zero, we don't wanna do anything. So I'm gonna drag this up and I'm gonna branch off. So if it's not zero, we're gonna set local scale 
And remember, we need a vector three for this, but all I, all I care about is the X value, right? So what I'm gonna do is create a vector three and pass in the X value with Y and Z being one, just like we did on our player and pass that in as the vector that we actually set the scale to. Very cool. And one more section here called flip. And now after we do all that, let's actually set the rigid body's velocity to be the movement variable, just like we did for our player. And in fact, let's make sure that we pass the flow from where we set the variable into our branch there. And then if we did not have to flip, so if it was in fact zero, so true, what I wanna do is set velocity on the rigid body 2D, there it is. And the velocity that I wanna set is going to be the movement speed on the X and then the Y of the current rigid body's velocity Y, just like we did for the player to allow the physics engine to handle the Y value. So if we're falling, it'll calculate the, the gravity and all that for us. We don't have to worry about that. But we also wanna set the velocity even if we had to flip, right? That doesn't matter. We wanna do it if we did flip and if we did not flip. And now we'll create another vector two here. And the Y is going to be the rigid body's velocity.y. So I'll say add unit, get velocity. And all I care about is the Y value. So get Y. We've done all this before. And then pass the Y value into the rigid body's velocity for the Y. And then for the X, we're going to get the movement variable. So get movement. And there's our X variable. So now based on whatever we calculate over here for the movement, We'll assign that to the X velocity of our enemy and he'll move in the direction that we assigned. And the gravity and whatnot will take over for the Y value and one more group. And just like our, our player's movement animation, I wanna do the exact same thing for our enemy. So whenever it's moving, we're gonna pass in the movement value to the speed parameter on our animator. So I wanna say set float name value, the name being speed and the value being the absolute value of our movement variable. So absolute, that'll give me the positive value of our movement. And one more section, animate. And that's all we have, calculate movement, flip the object around, move the object, and then animate it. And now that we have this set up, we can actually implement it in our patrol. So back to our enemy here. So in alive and then inside of patrol, we're gonna use our start state, and I'm gonna rename this to idle. And then back in patrol, I have idle. Now I wanna have a walk left and a walk right state. And we're gonna lay it out just like this. So create flow state, open this up, call it walk left. And then this one's called walk right. And within each of these states, we're going to use our enemy walk macro as a super unit to decide it walks negative one, it walks positive one, and then it walks zero. So let's do that. Open up walk left, delete these events, don't need any of these, and I'm gonna drag in enemy movement. Now walking left would be negative one. Let's go back, walk right, enemy movement, positive one. And you can really start to see the power of having these super units. enemy movement at zero. And now we have to decide how we're gonna transition from idle to walk left, to walk right, to idle, and then anywhere in between. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say, we can wait you know, a second or two, and then every, every couple of seconds, we're gonna decide if we, if we change our state. So maybe we, we're walking left and we decide to walk right, or walking right, then we decide to idle. And we're idling, we decide to walk left, that kind of thing. So we want to, what appears to be random, decide if we're going to change what we're currently doing. To do that, I'm gonna create another macro over here. So create bolt flow macro, and I'm gonna call it change mind. And in here, I'll set up my random changing state transition. So I'm gonna type in range, and I'm gonna add a random range here, and the minimum's gonna be one, and the maximum's gonna be, we'll say three. So in this case, you have to stay in one state for at least one second, but you'll be changing your mind in no more than three seconds and anywhere in between. And we're gonna pass that into a timer. So on timer elapsed, that's gonna be the delay amount anywhere between one and three. And then we wanna trigger state transition under nesting. This will allow us to initialize the transition from one state to another, just like that. And now each of our transitions between the walk left, walk right and idle will have back and forth transitions 
that will be based on this. So if I go back into Enemy, into Patrol, what I want to do is create transitions back and forth between all of these units. So walk left, I can hold down Control for this, drag from walk left to idle, and then from idle back to walk left, from idle to walk right, then walk right back to idle, walk left to walk right, and then walk right to walk left. And that's why we laid it out the way we did, so we have this organized look of transitions. And for each of these transitions, I'm going to select it and set the source to be macro and click switch. And that allows me to define a macro that will, it will use as the transition for this, in which we know we want to use change mind, just like that. And do that for all of these. Macro, switch, change mind. And now this is what we should have. We should have transitions between each of our states based on a random timer. And in our states, we'll have the enemy movement super unit set with the direction they should be moving. So let's test this out and see what's happening. Oh, and make sure you apply your changes that you've made in the variable editor and anything up here you've done. So all of the instances of enemy will get the changes. Oh, he's walking. Oh, and he walked right off the edge there. And you can see what's happening down here. You can see what goes where when. He's walking right an awful lot here, but it's completely random, so there's no way we can really control that. So he just fell to his death. Cool. And one thing you probably noticed was he did not care about the edge of the platform. He just walked right off, right? So we want him to know if he is near the edge of the platform. If he is, go the other direction. Don't walk right off to your death. And to do that, we're going to use a similar approach that we did for the ground check for jumping for the player. We cast a ray down below the player to see if he's standing on a platform. If he is, he can jump. We're going to do the same for the enemy, except... We're not going to cast it directly down below the enemy. We're going to cast it out in front of him, the direction he's walking, to see, am I getting close to the edge? If I am, then I should go the other direction. And we will do that in the next lesson. Hope you guys are learning a lot. My name is Austin. I will see you there.